got the broken bush, set up in the vase on two parallels, I put it running dead on the centre line of the milling machine, as you can see by this pointer. Right in the middle, we need a mill of 516 slot through there for the brush to run into. So the brook is a nice sliding fit in there and it's down below the surface. And you see how it works as it goes through. The brook is tapered and it comes up and up and up. And it's actually cut in there. And then you put a spacer in behind here, put the brook in again, you keep on going until you get the full depth of cut. But it's important that the brook is a good fit in the in the slot like that, in the guy like that. Otherwise you end up with a the key way that's either not straight or it's a slack fit, that's that's just nice. Some little rags to take off there and then we're ready to broach the bush. Okay, so they've taken the rags off it, that's a good fit in there and the brooch goes into there and you can see it's, it will be starting to cut there. It will become crystal clear when we start to uh, Cut the key there. I've got quite a few of these different sizes, but you never seem to have the one the one you want. Anyway. I'm at the stage now where I need to put the kiwi into this bush. I'm gonna put the kiwi in before I weld the bush in, just in case this isn't mild steel and it happens to go hard once I've welded it in, because I've made things out of supposedly mild steel before, welded them in and the bastards have gone really hard. And what I've got here is a little arbor press. Um, your friend Bob gave us it. This is ideal for doing brushing with. The only problem is it hasn't got enough height. So what I think I'll do is modify it because it can go on the edge of the bench like that and then I can get plenty of height that way. So the idea is to try mounting the milling machine and mill two flaps in there and then put two bits of heavy threaded rod in with a probably a cap head in the top, then I can make a plate to go across the bottom and I can adjust it at any height I want. I mean, at the minute you can actually get something quite large like that in and you can broach the bush in the pulley. Obviously when I do that at the bottom I won't be able to but I'll be able to get the legs of that in to do the broaching. So mounting it is going to be a little bit of a, a challenge mounting it so I can get it in the milling machine just to mill two flats on there to make sure that the, the threaded rod because I'll machine a shoulder on there goes up onto a shoulder it's nice and square quite simple operation it's just a, a rack and pinion really there's a, a handle goes in there you can get quite a lot of force up with it the thing with brushing is that isn't a, a vast amount of force used because too much force and you break the brooch because they're very brittle but you do get a nice feel at what you're doing you, it's mechanical as opposed to hydraulical hydraulical like man hydraulic isn't it it's mechanical as opposed to uh, like a hydraulic machine where you, you do get more feel with a, a pure mechanical machine anyway so i can get it mounted on the little machine somehow uh drill these out See if we can make it more useful for what I, what I want it for. You know, just working on the bench temporary with a, a couple of bolts down through there, and all the weights pulling down on them, so nothing's going to happen. 
I managed to find a way of mounting it. Obviously it's upside down, hanging underneath the table, and I've got the head pivoted around. There's nothing to see you can't do that. I've actually had the head right around here. It had things completely off the table that just wouldn't fit on the machine, and you can still drill holes and you can still work on them. A lot of the fun of a small shop like this is seeing what you can and can't do, how you can mount things and basically work outside the book. If you had a massive bridge port it wouldn't be a problem, but I haven't got a massive bridge port. Anyway, I've got it to a, a point now where I can get that cutter down. It's an old carbide ripping cutter I've had for a long time. It, uh, it does the job. And all I want to do is machine the flap on the bottom of that hole. Result the manual CNC is achieved. Got the camera held by hand, I'm sure you can see the the area of kind of spot mills in the bottom. Height doesn't matter because it's going to be on a, a piece of old thread rod, so it's adjustable anyway. Just going to try and find a way of mounting the other side now. Right, I've nearly got it this way, but the head won't move around any further because it's hitting the bracket for the inverter. The wiring's actually hitting that aluminium plate. I've got the inverter mounted on. I'm sure I'll take the plate off. Right, that was easily solved. Now we've got all the movement we need. Right, I think that's going to be just enough room to do what I need to do. Once again, I'm playing the the man who was saying, see here. One cut, 20 cells should do it. Okay, that's right on the limit of what I can, what I can get, but I think I've done enough to share enough. Right, you can see what I've managed to achieve is two nice flat faces. Doesn't matter what heights they are because the, the threaded bar will make it all adjustable. But at least when I turn sure lads on the ends of the threaded bar, they'll be lying nice and square and parallel to the job. I'm going to drill these holes out, 12mm clearance for a bolt, and then I'll machine the end of this square, drill and tap 12mm, and that goes up through there with a bolt holding it on. This frame's cast iron, it's fairly thick. But even so, cast iron's not designed to be pulled in tension. So what I'm going to do is make a couple of washers to go on top of there. 
what I've decided to do is I'll nip outside in the freezing cold and I'll cut out, I'll drone cut out two squares on the plasma cutter just to get a little bit more practice drawn and using the cutter. I've got a basic drone, uh, the shape I want for the reinforcing plate. So we're going to get the basic drone into a format that the plasma machine understands how to cut. Right, I've converted the drone into a cut path. You can see, I don't know, you can see the little arrows on there. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see the arrows where it's going to cut. Right, we'll load the J code. Right, I've managed to burn out two squares as you saw. I'll bring the camera in closer and show you the couple of little faults I've done with it. Every time I use the machine up to now, I'm learning something different. And anyway, I'll bring the camera in and show you the actual result of burning these bits out. Right, that's the that's the spear saha washer. It's actually an eight mil plate. The faults I've got are you can see whether it's pierced a hole in or it started to burn the hole in. It puts a pierce in first. I should have had the pierce further into the centre so it wouldn't have been seen. And on the outside edge, it should have pierced on the outside of the line, not the inside. So basically, they're both the wrong way around. Uh, like I said, it's quite a lot to learn. Um, I'm not getting that much time on it because it is bloody freezing up there. But it took us probably two or three minutes to draw it and 30 seconds to cut it out. Um, you could get a bit of metal and file it and drill it and grind it. But I have got this plasma cutter to, to try and get some video footage uh, done. And um, I'm really enjoying playing with it, I suppose. Once again, it just means to say thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, thanks for clicking the like button. And as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes and I'm coming towards Dev Z, my dad, and even me with me dodgy arm, which by the way is improving all the time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hi, my name's Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night night. It's not Sunday night night time on your bell end!